Landwin was the purest and finest of the Grail companions. He drew all of the virtue of his land into his person, and left the country the waste that it is today. Sir Emerin, Knight of Lyoness, shortly before his execution for heresy. The Dukedom of Musalon was a former founding dukedom that once had territories stretching along the western shores of Bretonia. Ever since its fall, Musalon is a cursed, impoverished land that is plagued by constant misfortunes, disease, and drawing the attention of dark powers. Having since lost its status as a proper dukedom, the lands of Musalon are the smallest out of all of the Twelve Realms, even though it once held the title as being the most beautiful and fairest land of them all. Ever since the death of the previous duke, what remains of Musalon is a backwater region filled with marshes, bogs, and swamps. Those people still living within the dukedom are inbred and horribly mutated. Musalon's villages look poor and run down, more so than typical Bretonian villages. <laughs> the peasant hovels are on the verge of collapsing, streets are little more than sewers, and there are as many dead animals to be seen as living ones. The inhabitants watch any visitors silently from their homes, cowering within and giving only occasional glimpses of their malformed bodies. No one rules this accursed land for no one wishes to. Never been there, never want to go. Do I look like an idiot? Eldakar of Busrek, coachman. Musalon is the smallest, poorest, and most cursed of the kingdoms of Bretonia. Much of its land was taken by Lioness in 1814 IC, after the corruption of Duke Merovec was revealed. See my third History of Bretonia video if you want to learn a bit more about that. The remaining land falls into two areas. In the west, the coastal areas are dominated by swamp, with isolated areas of higher and firmer ground. In the north and east, there are rugged hills and the edges of the forest of Arden. The whole of Musalon is plagued by extreme weather. When the air is still, thick fogs gather, and if there is wind, it is always strong and almost always accompanied by rain or hail. Thunderstorms are common, and fires are also common, started by lightning strikes. Fortunately, these fires do not spread very far. The hills are rocky and treacherous, and most vegetation consists of scrubby thorn bushes. The Musalon rose also grows in the hills. This bush has luxuriant evergreen leaves, and vivid purple flowers that bloom most of the year. It looks out of place in the hills, but fits right in, in its own way. The stems are coated with vicious, barbed thorns, and the pollen is a deadly poison. What is more, it grows where a human corpse has been left to rot. The sites of old battles turn into thickets of the deadly plant. Musalon's swamps are even more treacherous. The firm ground of a trail often sinks an inch or so beneath the level of water. This poses no problem for those in stout boots or on horseback, apart from the existence of sucking mud and quicksand under the same water a yard or so either side. To make matters worse, swamp mat creates false trails. Swamp mat is a grassy plant that grows out from solid ground over water, mud and quicksand, forming a raft about six feet wide and up to hundreds of yards long. It traps mud in its leaves and draws much of the water from it, so that the top of the swamp mat is hard to distinguish visually from the trails that it links to. Those stepping on it can easily tell the difference, however. Swamp mat cannot support anything heavier than a small rodent. The cursed dukedom is haunted by undead, in greater numbers than elsewhere in the kingdom. Indeed, the land positively encourages the undead. Undead creatures summoned by necromantic spells do not revert to normal corpses if they become uncontrolled. Instead, they continue to obey their last order until destroyed in combat. Wandering undead can sense the borders of Musalon and turn back. If forced across, they will become normal corpses unless they are still controlled. These energies seem appealing to other undead as well. There are surprisingly few reports of beastmen. Beastmen, zombies and skeletons are common near the forest of Arden, but living beastmen seem to avoid the area. The exception is tales of man-sized rats and rat men. Such creatures are often encountered in the swamps. If you don't behave, I'll lock you out when the monsters come. Exasperated mother in Boussoulon. The people of Musalon are generally human, although you would not always know it to look at them. Most peasants are horribly deformed and suffer constantly from foul diseases. The residents of Musalon are there because they cannot leave. Many deformities that are normal in the dukedom would get someone burned as a mutant anywhere else. 
Indeed, there are a number of Musulon peasants who are mutants, but who live in what passes for normal society because nobody has realised anything is wrong. Some people do come to Musulon from outside. These are the most depraved and evil bandits, cultists of the ruinous powers and necromancers. They believe rightly that few people will bother to pursue them once they enter the cursed dukedom. Many such immigrants find that the monsters waiting for them are more dangerous than any bounty hunter, but a few survive to add to the peril for the next set of arrivals. The castles of the nobility also appear to be decaying, but here the appearance is somewhat illusory. Ruined portions are not unusual, but parts are still inhabited and they are always well maintained but never beautiful. The decaying corpses of gibbeted criminals hang outside most castles, fat ravens feeding on the remnants. The nobles all wear black armour with a helmet, and they never reveal their faces. Some are actually undead, vampires, whites or mummies, and the same lord has ruled for centuries. Others are mutants, or servants of the ruinous powers bearing the marks of their lords. A few are simply human, and need to hide the fact lest their neighbours think them weak. Adventurers do not need a reason to leave Musulon. They leave because they are able to do so. Many live near the borders in the first place and are lucky enough to be born undeformed. A few are simply born with more courage and drive than those around them, and for these adventurers, leaving Musulon is merely the first step. Almost all lie about their origins. Musulon's reputation for degenerate evil is not one most adventurers want to carry.